I'm happy to recognize next Zubin Banji as we continue honoring our distinguished alumni. Zubin Banji and I were in our Master of Mass Communications program at the same time, so I want to reiterate that distinguished does not mean old. <laughs> This award, uh, as you've heard, honors graduates with uh, significant professional accomplishment who've been out of school for at least 10 years. And I volunteered to introduce Zubin Bamji because primarily I, I, I enjoy saying Zubin Bamji. <laughs> <laughs> but I soon realized that in addition to saying Zubin Bamji, <laughs> I would need to say Global Gas Flaring Reduction Partnership, <laughs> which Zubin Bamji manages on behalf of the World Bank. The Global Gas Flaring Reduction Partnership is a World Bank climate initiative to significantly reduce global emissions related to flaring. Flaring is a routine, often wasteful occurrence in the oil production process. Zubin Bamji joined the World Bank in 2014 as a, in a communications position, and he was chosen over thousands of applicants, by the way. And three years later, one of his campaigns received a top award from the World Bank. And his current World Bank focus, the GGRP, <laughs> has been covered extensively in major media including the New York Times, the Financial Times, The Economist, and CNN, and others, and it, and it continues to add global partners. Zubin Bamji's work at World Bank seems a natural progression from his days here as an undergraduate business major and then with us as an MMC student. Draws upon his early professional experience as an account supervisor at Ogilvy Worldwide, as a brand manager at NPR, as Director of Marketing and Membership Communications at the Security Industry Association, and most recently as Senior Advisor for Regulatory Policy at the U.S. Department of Commerce. Zubin Bamji mm -hmm. humbly suggests that his MMC education and experience were instrumental in his career development. Uh, we'd certainly like to think so. <laughs> and for tonight, anyway, we'll take full credit for Zubin's success as we honor him as one of our finest. Well, my deep apologies for being so late. Uh, and thank you very much, uh, Carmen. Thanks to the university, the faculty, and administration at the School of Journalism and Mass Communications for this incredible, very humbling honor. Thanks also to Daniel McNaughton. I'm not sure if she's here. Van Cornegay. Thanks very much for all your help, support, and uh, encouragement. So um, many of you will know the World Bank, some of you may not. Uh, this multilateral organization started back in 1944, right after World War II. And it was founded primarily by the United States, but uh, other countries as well, of course. And the entire purpose was to rebuild Europe after World War II. So after the last uh, 70 plus years, um, of course, Europe was completely destroyed, and so we needed some way to finance all the rebuilding. But anyway, after the last 70 plus years, the World Bank has built hospitals, bridges, roads, um, schools, government agencies. If you walk around London or many other parts of Europe, you'll see things that were built by the World Bank and didn't even realize it. Um, and mostly these are big projects, of course. 
So that's always a, a nice idea when you walk around, you go abroad, and you see things that your organization built. It does fill you with a little bit of pride. Anyway, we're also technically part of the United Nations. We do uh, many other things, including providing independent, totally agenda-free advice and guidance to governments. And it could be how best to utilize your natural resources. So if you have oil, gas, minerals, metals, then we help these governments understand how best they can use those for economic development, things like that. So um, other sectors of the economy, healthcare, education, um, and it's great um, to see that uh, there is an organization that does help countries in this way. In my role at the World Bank, I'm fortunate to do what I love the most, helping mostly developing countries improve the lives of their citizens, striving every day to solve some of the world's most intractable problems, leading a team of extremely smart, gifted, accomplished, and most of all passionate professionals, traveling the world, yes, and fulfilling my deepest professional desires. I'm an incredibly curious person like my father was, so there's also a love of lifelong learning. And the World Bank provides that opportunity in numerous ways and also in spades. Speaking of traveling, I did just fly back from London today, literally landed in Washington around 4 o'clock, got right back on a flight from D.C. to Columbia without going home, changed in that parking lot over there. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done that, not even. <laughs> um, that was kind of fun. It took me back to college days. So. <laughs> Now, um, why do I mention this? Well, because ever since I came to this greatest of countries as a 17-year-old kid from India, I have always been asked, no matter where I am in the world, where are you from? Now, for most people, that's an easy answer. But for me, it's a bit complicated and also a little bit of a challenge. And as the years have gone by, the answer to that question has not got easier. It's got more difficult to answer. Do I say India, where I was born and grew up? Do I say Bahrain, where my father worked for a few years and I also went to school for a few years? Do I say Washington, D.C., where I've lived now for about 25 years? Or do I say Columbia, South Carolina, where I got my bachelor's and my graduate degrees and also where I met my awesome wife of 27 years, Allison, thank you. As I quickly think through how I want to answer that question these days, I have to admit it sometimes depends on who is asking the question. So, if it's a person from India, I'll say I'm from India. <laughs> I'll say I'm from India. And if it's a person from DC, well, I'm from DC. But the bottom line is, as they say, home is where the heart is. And then I'm reminded where my heart is, and it's in South Carolina. Now, why South Carolina? Well, besides the fact that my wife, her family are from here, we got married at Rutledge Chapel just down the road, had our reception at the top of Capstone, which I understand is not so nice anymore. But uh, <laughs> it was fun for us, though. <laughs> I also worked in radio for many years, and that was a total blast back when people actually listened to radio. Um, and then, of course, I've got some of my best friends through life that went to Carolina with me, and we stay in touch and get together. And then we also go for vacation to Edisto Beach, Charleston, come and see family and friends here in Columbia. So um, there's many reasons, but there's also a huge reason, and that's my beautiful daughter, Ava who now lives here and is at the Honors College, also just down the street. Um, then there's also other reasons, like whenever I arrive here, I can feel my blood pressure just drop. <laughs> the stress from working, living, and driving in DC gets washed away <laughs> with a perfect cup of sweet tea. <laughs> the friendliness and politeness, I hope we never forget that here. 
The people here erase whatever complication or difficulty I may be experiencing on any given day. Papa Jazz is like a treasured bookstore, allows me to escape and reminisce about special moments and times when a specific album or a song was released as I flipped through those beat up old bins over there. So it is where I am right now. Um, let me just end my remarks by telling you how grateful I am to this university and the School of Journalism and Mass Communications besides giving me the warm, fuzzy feelings. It's given me the tools not just to succeed professionally, but the wherewithal to always try to be a kind, thoughtful, and empathetic person, just like the people that make up this community. To recognize not just professional success, but also people success, how you make someone feel. This is and always has been a lovely university and school with a lot of excellent professors and students like my fellow awardees. Congrats to all of you. You've accomplished a lot and achieved a lot. And uh, I'm proud to share this day with you. And that's about it. Thanks very much. I'm still out of breath. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much. It's, um, it's definitely one of the special days of my life, um, of my career for sure. Definitely one of the special days of my life. Thanks very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you.